I'm going to go to routers, clear the filter. Notice FRR is displayed as well as Cisco iOS devices. So I'm going to drag some Cisco devices to the workspace and I'm going to cable them up, connect to the first Ethernet port, connect to the second Ethernet port on the FRR device. Now, please note that these Ethernet port names are not exactly the same as what you'll see in the appliance, but this is the first Ethernet port, this is the second Ethernet port. I've started the devices, so I'll open up consoles to the devices. You can see the FRR devices booting up. So are the Cisco devices. And notice a login prompt is displayed. This device is running on Ubuntu 16.04.4 LTS. Login as FRR, login with a password of FRR. So there we go. We've logged in. Notice show run, very similar to Cisco. SH tab, run tab. Show running config, very similar to Cisco. Question mark. Compare that to Cisco, and you'll notice it's a similar kind of interface. So question mark works. C-O-N-F, tab, T, tab, just like we have in Cisco. So conf, T, tab. Host, tab. So hostname FRR1, notice the hostname has changed. Similar to Cisco, host tab, Cisco one enter. Question mark, very similar to Cisco. Exit, conf T, control Z, back to privilege mode, conf T. So if you're used to a Cisco CLI, you'll be comfortable in this CLI. Interfaces are a little bit different, so show interface we can see various interfaces here. We don't have exactly the same commands as we do in Cisco, but notice there's a list of interfaces. So show interface question mark. I can see a list of Ethernet interfaces. So I could type show interface ENS3 to see details of that Ethernet interface. Notice it's currently down. So conf t interface ENS question mark three. IP address, let's configure an IP address of 10.1.1.2. Just to go back, notice when I type IP address, I see the format. This device uses CIDR notation, which is different to Cisco Classic iOS. So I'm going to give it an IP address of that, and I'm going to type no shutdown or no shut, just as I would on a Cisco device. I'll go on to the second interface, so interface ENS4, IP address 10.1.2.1 slash 24, no shut. So show interface ENS3, notice the interface is up, a line protocol is up. If I looked at another interface, you can see the interface is down. So Ethernet interface 5 is down, but 3 is up, and so is 4. Interface is up, up. Notice we can see the VRF, which is the default or global IP routing table. We can see the IP version 4 address. We can see the IP version 6 address. So on Cisco, interface gigabit 00. That's this interface here. So what I could do actually is edit to this and say ENS3 as the interface. Edit to this. ENS4 as the interface name. So on Cisco 1, IP address 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask, no shut of the interface. Can we ping the FR routing router 10.1.1.2? Yes, we can. On this router ping Cisco, Ping succeeds. Notice it acts in a similar way to Linux. Control C to break the ping. Second Cisco router, host R2, interface gigabit 00, no shut, IP address 10.1.2.2 slash 24. Can it ping 
the FRR router? Yes, it can. Now, Cisco router 1 won't be able to ping Cisco 2. So let's actually call this host Cisco 2 because we need a routing protocol. So on Cisco, router OSPF 1. On FRR 1, ConfT router OSPF 1. Or simply router OSPF network. And on Cisco, you would do it this way, area zero. On the FRR router, we've got a lot of options similar in concept to Cisco. So I'll do that again. Notice we've got area, just like Cisco have here, and other options. But let's use the network command, similar to Cisco. Here we use a CIDR notation. So that, instead of the way that Cisco did it on classic iOS, so very similar. And then I'll do the other side. Show IP, OSPF neighbor. We can see that we are at a two-way state. On this side, show IP, OSPF neighbor. X start. We can see that the other router is the BDR. Relationships are being established. While I'm waiting for that, let's configure Cisco 2. Router OSPF 1, network 10120, area 0. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Relationship is already full. There we can see the output. Show IP OSPF neighbor, full relationship is shown here. We have a full relationship to both Cisco 1 and Cisco 2. Cisco 1 is the designated router. Cisco 2 is the backup designated router on this segment. We can see the Ethernet interfaces. So similar output to a Cisco device. Neighbor, neighbor, priority, priority, state, state, dead time, dead time, address, address, interface, interface, and here we've got some additional information. So can Cisco 1 ping Cisco 2? Yes, it can. I'll create a loopback on Cisco 1 of this, and then I'll advertise that into OSPF, so do it this way. On the FRR router, show IP route. We can see a routing table very similar to how we would see it on Cisco. So show IP route on Cisco. Notice the output is very similar. We can see the selected route here. We can see that it has a FIB route. So this route was learned via OSPF. Notice we can see the administrative distance and the cost. So let's actually do it on router two. Show IP route. Notice cost here is three to get to that network. Output is very similar to Cisco on the FR router. So as an example, it should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which it can. And on Cisco two, it should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which it can should be able to trace to the loopback of router one, which it can. As a last step, let's save the configuration. Notice even WR works on the FRR router. We can see options such as show running config versus show startup config. But notice what you can also do here is exit to the Linux shell. So now I'm in Linux. I can see who I am. I can see files listed here. I could navigate to various directories. This is Linux. And if I want to get back into my Cisco shell, I simply do that. And notice I'm back in my Cisco-ish shell, but there's nothing stopping me dropping down into Linux with this router. So very powerful, a lot of options available. If you want to learn more, have a look at the user guide that explains lots of options.
I want to thank Andrush for adding the suppliance to the Genus 3 marketplace and making it really easy for us as network engineers to learn white box switching and open source implementations. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.